What's going on everybody, Jared here, and today we're going to be looking at how to create a custom camera view for your application inside of Xcode. So essentially what we're doing here, we're taking this view and we're making it our camera scene. Now this technique could be used for many things, whether that be you're setting up a profile image for your messaging app or your like social media network, or if you're trying to get a custom camera view for something, say Snapchat, you can use this technique towards that kind of thing. And we're also going to show you how to take a photo from that custom view that you have created. Either way, let's go ahead and get started. So the way we do this is we're first going to go ahead, open up Xcode, create a new Xcode project. And inside of here, we're going to make this a single view application, although this applies to all the different type of applications, as long as you can use a UI view. Now, continuing on, let's go ahead, hit next. And your product name, I'm just going to go ahead and put this as my camera view. Again, whatever you want. Language, Swift, Devices, Universal. Go ahead, click Next, and Create. Now, the first thing we want to do inside of our project is we're going to set up our view and our button that takes the image. So we're going to go ahead, go over here to our main.storyboard. Now, inside of here, we are going to be working with a UI view and a button. So we just go ahead, go down here to the bottom right-hand corner, and we're just gonna go ahead, click on this view right here, and just click and drag that right onto your scene. I'm just gonna place it right in the middle here, and I'm also gonna change the size of this view. So let's go ahead, go over here to our size inspector, head over here to our width and our height, and I feel like making this, let's say, a 100 by a 100 box, and that is going to be my image view. So I'm gonna go ahead, put that right in the center of my scene like so, and then I'm also gonna go ahead and add some constraints so that it stays in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead, right click or control click and drag from this view over to the view itself, and we're gonna say center vertically and center horizontally, and that's just gonna keep it in the middle. And as you can see, everything's red right now because all the constraints are not good yet. So we can go ahead, take this view, and then we're going to right click or control click and drag, and we're gonna add a width and height. That basically means we wanna keep that width and height no matter what happens anywhere around the scene, and we're gonna keep it positioned. And now we have it, so our constraints are all blue, so we're good to go. Now the next part of this is we're going to go ahead and add a button onto our scene. So go ahead, click and drag this button right onto your scene like so, and I'm just gonna put that right down here. And then I want it to stay there again, so first off I'm gonna go ahead and change the text of this, so I'm gonna call this Take Photo. So this button is of course going to take our photo. So we're just gonna go ahead and right click or control click and drag from that take photo over here to our view. And we wanna add some vertical spacing between those. So we're gonna keep that amount of space that's going on between our view and our button, as you can see. And also the button's still giving me a red box around it. And the way to fix this is you just right click or control click and drag, and it wants to be centered inside of the scene. So it just go ahead and say center horizontally in the container and that should make everything blue and you're good to go. So now we need to take this view and this button and we're gonna apply the camera view onto it and also take some photos. So the way we do this is we're gonna go ahead, open up our assistant editor. I'm going to right click or control click and drag from my view over to my view controller.swift. And inside of here is where you're going to add an outlet connection so that you can call your camera view. This is what we're gonna call it. So go ahead, type in the name here and this is going to be my camera view. And essentially we're going to be adding the camera feed from our phone into that view. And then we're taking a photo from that view itself as well. So that's what the view is there for. Now also with this photo right here, I'm gonna go ahead, right click or control click and drag from that take photo and just put that right down here. And we want this connection type to be an action. And then for the name of this, you can just go ahead and call this take photo. Essentially, that's what's gonna happen when we click this button. Now you can of course change the event type. I feel like keeping it touch up inside. So go ahead, hit connect, and we'll play around with that in just a minute, but let's continue on. All right, so the first thing we need to do in order to get the camera feed onto the camera view is first off, we're just gonna go ahead and delete all of those functions that are going on right there. So essentially this is prepping everything up before the view appears and this gives it a nicer look uh, to our scene so that you don't have like a blank screen when you first load it up. But either way, continuing on with the view will appear. Let's go ahead and add the camera onto the camera view. So the first thing you need to do in order to get the camera feed is first you need a camera. So let's go ahead and decide which camera do you want to be using. So the way we do this is we're gonna go ahead and say let devices. So this is essentially what devices are on our phone, whether that be a camera or some other thing, that's what we're gonna be accessing and putting that onto our camera feed. So the way we do this is we're gonna go ahead and say let devices equal, and then this will be equal to an AV capture type. Now, right now it's not going to fill it 
in for you and you would actually get an error if you tried to do this. So let's go up here to our import and we're gonna say import AV foundation. So essentially what's stored inside of AV foundation as far as we're concerned is the camera stuff. So we need to import AV foundation in order to get camera stuff working within our app. So we're gonna go ahead, continue on and we're gonna say let devices equal and this will be equal to our AV capture device dot a devices with media type like so and essentially what this media type is what kind of things do we want to be accessing via these devices and of course the media type that we're trying to access is the video feed from the camera so we're going to go ahead and say av so this will be our av media type and then this will be our video. So we're grabbing all the devices that can do AV media type video. Now we're also wanting to circulate throughout those devices and pick either the front or the back camera and utilizing that inside of our application. So we can go ahead and say for device in devices. So essentially we just created this other variable right here, which is going to be a device that's inside of those devices. And then we can use that device that we're grabbing and put it into our application. So we can say for device in devices, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And then inside of here, we can go ahead and take that device and determine the position of it. So we can say if device dot position will be equal equal to, meaning that we are comparing the position of what we're trying to grab and the position of the device that we're circulating through. So we're gonna go ahead and say is equal equal to, and this will be our AV capture device position dot, and you can either pick the back or the front, or if you have another value, right now we only have back and front, so that's what we're gonna be using. So we have AV capture device position, and depending on what you want, you can either pick the back or the front. I'm wanting it to be a selfie camera, so I'm gonna pick the front. Then go ahead and open curly bracket close curly bracket like so. So that's great. Now we have the device and now we want to add this onto a capture session is what it's called. And this is essentially like your camera feed coming through. So let's go ahead, go right up here and we're going to go ahead and create a new variable. So var and this will be our capture session. And we'll set this equal to an AV capture session like so open close parentheses so now with this capture session we want to take the device and get the data coming from the device and put it inside of that capture session which then we can put into a preview layer which then we can show on our view so the way that swift works with this is we need to have a do try and catch so essentially we do this stuff that's inside of these brackets here we try this and if there's an error happening then we catch that error that's essentially what it means so we're going to go ahead and say do open close curly bracket like so and then we're going to go ahead and say let input equal and we'll set this equal to try and this will be av capture device input and then open curly bracket and then we want to get the device so essentially this will be the device that we're using whether that be the front or back camera so we're going to go ahead and put in that device that we just grabbed so we're just going to go ahead put that in there and then just go ahead and as you can see it has an error right here just go ahead and say insert as av capture device like so now, as you can see, there's another error. So as you can remember, we did a do, try, and catch. So we have the try, and now we need to catch that error. So go ahead, go right outside of these curly brackets right here, and we're just gonna go ahead and say catch, open curly bracket, close curly bracket like so, and that should get rid of that error. We're not gonna put anything inside of that catch just because I know that this works, but just to be sure, just go ahead and say print, open close parentheses, open close quotes, and we're just gonna go ahead and put in error. So that means when this catch value is called, that means we had an error. Either way, let's continue on and we have this do, try, and then now with this input that we are grabbing right here, we wanna add this into our capture session. So we're just gonna go ahead and say if capture session dot can add input, meaning you can add input, then we're going to input this input inside of that. There you have it. <laughs> so open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and we have that. And then if it can add input, then we're gonna go ahead and say capture session dot add input. And we're going to add that input that we are grabbing from that device. So there we have our capture session. So essentially we're feeding everything from our device, whether that be the front or back camera, and we're putting that inside of that capture session. Now this capture session is an input. Now we need to take that capture session and output it so that we can actually see it. So continuing on, we want to go ahead, go up here to the variables again, and we're going to go ahead and say var, and this will be equal to our session output. So this will be the output that's coming from our session input. And we're going to set this equal to, and this will be our AV capture uh, still image output. 
and then open close parentheses like so. So essentially, the video feed that's coming through is a still image output, and we're just feeding it through 60 frames per second at a time, or 30 frames per second at a time. So we're going to continue on and add some output to that output that we just created. So we're going to go ahead and say our session output dot, and this will be our output settings, will be equal to, and we're going to set this equal to open bracket, close bracket, and inside of here, you're going to have two objects. So this will be a AV video codec key, and then colon, and then this is going to be your AV video codec uh, JPEG. So here is your output, and your output is either going to be a video or a JPEG. So when we actually take that photo, we're going to take a JPEG, and when we're doing video, that's what we're grabbing for the video. Now let's continue on, and we're going to go ahead and say if our capture session dot can add output, and this time we're going to put this as our session output, and with our can add output, of course we're going to put in our session output and then open curly bracket, close curly bracket. So if it can add that output in there, then we can go ahead and say capture session dot add output. And of course, we're gonna put in our session output again. And of course, we're gonna put in our session output again. And then now that we have the session output, we're now going to take that session output and we're gonna apply it to our application. And then now we are adding that output from our session output onto our capture session. We want to add this onto a preview layer so that the user can actually see it. So let's go ahead, go up here, and we're going to create a new variable, and this will be our preview layer. And we're going to set this equal to our AV capture uh, video preview layer. So this is the preview layer that we're going to be putting onto our view so that people can actually see it. So continuing on to actually add this preview layer onto our scene, we're going to go ahead and say our preview layer will be equal to, and we're going to set this equal to an AB capture video preview layer, and then open parentheses, and this will be with the session. And of course, this is going to be our capture session like so. So we have our preview layer that's grabbing the session, which is our capture session right there. And then now with this preview layer, we want to add some gravity to this. Well, it's not the same kind of gravity that you would think of. It'll make sense in just a second. So go ahead and say preview layer dot gravity dot video gravity will be equal to AV layer uh, video gravity, and this will be our resize aspect and fill. So we're going to fill up the whole scene via the aspect ratio and stuff like that. So this is going to resize our video view to the view that we have inside of our scene, and it's going to look nice and clean. That's essentially what the video gravity is about. I don't know why they call it gravity, but that's what it is. So continuing on, we're going to go ahead and say preview layer dot, and this will be our video orientation. So this is, of course, going to be the orientation of our video. And you can, of course, set this equal to an AV capture uh, video orientation dot. And then you can put this as like portrait, landscape, right, landscape, reft, whatever you want. I'm just going to keep this as portrait. And then now we want to take this preview layer and we're going to add it to our camera view, finally. So we're going to go ahead and say camera view dot layer dot add uh, sub layer. And we're going to add the sub layer of our preview layer as you can see. And then now that we have this all up and running, you need to have an iPhone to test this. So go ahead, build and run this and run it on your iPhone. And then you'll be able to get things working properly. So as you can see, as I'm brought into the screen, it says camera view would like to access the camera. Just go ahead and say, okay. And then it's going to access the camera. Now with your preview layer, it's not showing right now. And this is because of the positioning of our preview layer. So let's go ahead and fix that by going over here to our view controller dot swift. And we're going to put the X and Y values. So with the X and Y value here, you're going to go ahead and say our self dot camera uh, view dot frame dot width divided by two. So we're essentially taking the size of our camera view and we're dividing that by two and putting that as our X value so that it's right smack dab in the center of our scene. And then with our Y value here, we want to go ahead and say our self dot camera view dot frame dot height. And this of course will be divided by two. So that again is putting it right in the middle. Oh, and one last thing we need to do is go up here to our capture session and we want to go ahead and say our capture session dot start running. So we're going to start running our capture session though so that it works. And another reason why this isn't working is because with our preview layer dot position, we also want to set up how big is our preview layer actually going to be. So we're going to go ahead and say preview layer dot bounds will be equal to, and we're going to set this equal to our camera view dot frame. That's just the combination that I figured out works. So go ahead, build and run this, and you should be good to go. So now as you can see, our view is actually loaded, and here is our little camera view and it's coming from the front camera up here. Now, if you wanna make your view a little bit bigger, you can do so, but right now, let's go ahead and focus on taking a photo. 
So the way we do this is we're gonna go ahead and say if let, and this will be our video connection equal to, and we're gonna set this equal to our session output dot dot connection uh, type with media type right there. So connection with media type, and then this media type is of course going to be our AV media type video. And then open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And then now, as you can see, we created this variable from this. So we're gonna set this equal to our session output dot connection with media type AV media type out video. So we're gonna take from that video connection that we have right there and take a photo from that video connection. So we're gonna go ahead and say session output dot capture still image asynchronously from connection. And of course our connection is going to be our video connection that we just created right up there. And then with this completion handler, just go ahead and say open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And then it's wanting two variables, which will be your uh, sample buffer and an error. So just go ahead and put in buffer comma error in, and then you should be good to go. So with this buffer that we just created, we're gonna go ahead and say let our image data and we're gonna make this equal to our AV capture uh, still image output dot JPEG still image NSDD representation from this buffer that we just got. So this is going to be our buffer that we have right up here. So essentially we're taking that video connection, we created a buffer and we're creating a JPEG image from that. And now we wanna save this into our albums. So let's go ahead and say UI image write to saved photos album. And this is how you save your images. So just go ahead, go in. And for this first one right here that it says image, UI image, just go ahead and type in UI image, open parentheses, and you wanna put this one that says data because we're gonna put in our image data that we just created right there. And then just close those parentheses off like so. And then with the rest of these, just go ahead and type in nil as we are not playing around with them at all. And then it's just wanting an exclamation point at the end of this, so just go ahead and add that. And then let's go ahead, build and run this, and now we should be able to take photos. And then now as we click take photo, it says camera view would like to access to your photos. Just go ahead, click OK. And then now let's go ahead, take a photo. And as you can see, you have the shutter going on there as well. And then now if I go over here to my photos, you will see that I just have those photos in my photo album that I just took. And also it's important to note that the photos that are taken with this method of doing things are this size of photos. They're not a square aspect ratio as you see inside of your view. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to get all this set up, how to get the camera view, how to edit your view to whatever you want. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. If you want to see any more videos like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Bye.